Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the difference between input and output circuits and the different kinds. So on input circuits, we're gonna be comparing pull up versus pull down. And for the output, we're gonna be looking at high side versus low side drivers. So to help us with this, I've pulled up this wiring diagram. This is from a 2003 Chevy Cavalier. This is the cooling fan circuit. And you can see that there is a computer involved right here, which is where we're going to be talking about inputs and output circuits. So let's first kind of understand this. This fan motor is our ultimate goal to turn on. You can see that the motor gets ground all the time. And so we are waiting for it to get power and the relay is going to be providing that from right here. But something's going to activate that relay. Over here, you can see that the relay has power all the time, but it is waiting for ground and it's going to get that ground from this computer. So this dark green wire is an output wire controlling the coil inside this relay. Now the question becomes, is this a high side or a low side driver output circuit? And it's very simple. You look at the load that it's controlling, you find what it already has, and since it already has power, then we know that the computer is controlling the low side, or in other words, the ground. So I'm gonna label that right here. This is a low side driver okay now let's look at our input the computer is not going to ground this wire until it gets a signal from the engine coolant temp sensor that tells it to do so so these two wires are our input circuit one of them is labeled for us as a low reference that means that this wire internally is grounded okay so the computer is going to be sensing off of the yellow wire. And so I wanna figure out, is this a pull up or a pull down input circuit? And I'm gonna show you how to figure that out. So similar to how we figured out whether or not this was a high side or a low side driver, we're gonna do that over here for pull up versus pull down. We're gonna look at the thing that the sensor already has, and this works if this was a switch too. It already has ground, which means that we're gonna be sensing off of this yellow wire and it has to have power internal to the computer right here. So since we're going to be uh, signaling off of the wire that has power, this is going to be called a pull up circuit. Now the other way to think of that is if I were to unplug this sensor, what would the computer read on the yellow wire? And the answer is five volts. And so the voltage got pulled up in an open state that's what makes it a pull-up circuit. If it had power all the time, and then I had ground over here on the signal, then when I unplug the sensor or had an open circuit, it would default to zero volts, and the computer would be able to set a code saying that we have an open circuit. Okay, that would be a pull down. Now what I wanna do is draw what is actually happening on the inside of this. So for the yellow wire, I'm gonna just continue this in we know, I just told you that it has voltage on it, so I'm gonna draw a five volt reference wire. Um, but if all I had was this five volts right here, then no matter what this sensor was doing out here, the computer would always read just five volts. So I have to have a fixed resistor on the inside of this computer, I'm gonna draw it right here, so that we have a reference Right, we have something changing in reference to this resistor out here. And then the computer, what it's gonna do is it's gonna sense off of the wire right here. So I'm just gonna call this my sensor or voltage sense wire. That looks like a five, but that is an S right there. Okay, so now as the resistance changes out here on the engine coolant temp sensor, the voltage on this yellow wire is going to change because there's a voltage difference or a voltage drop difference between the fixed resistor in here and the variable resistor out here. And we're gonna sense that. And then based on the programming, the computer, when it sees it reach a certain voltage, it will then command our output over here. And on the inside of the output, we know ultimately there's a transistor in there. I'll just draw a simple, transistor circuit, okay? And we already discussed that it's going to be giving ground. So ground's gonna be fed through the transistor over to here, okay? What controls the base is not important 
right now because I know that it's probably go like this input's going through a processor. So ultimately, I'm just I'm just going to simplify it and say, okay, the signal wire, it's going into a processor. Processor's looking at whatever voltage that is. When it sees it, it will drive the base of this transistor, which will ultimately give ground to the coil, which will turn this on over here. Okay, let's try it with one other circuit. Okay, so let's try this again on this new circuit. This is a shift interlock circuit off of that same 2003 Chevy Cavalier. So if we want to be able to shift out of park, we need this solenoid to turn on and move a little pin out of the way so we can free up our shifter. And that won't happen until we push on the brake, so there is a switch on the brake. But it's not just a simple switch turning on a solenoid. It's a switch that's an input to a computer, and then the computer processes that information and then allows, or sorry, I should say, it outputs to this solenoid and unlocks the shifter for you. So looking at the load over here, it has power all the time. It's waiting for ground. It's not gonna get it until this body control module gives it. So since we're controlling the ground side, this is a this is a low side driver again. Okay. On the input, we're not using a sensor anymore. We're using a switch, but the switch is like a sensor in that we're waiting, the computer is waiting to see something happen on this wire in order to then command uh, the solenoid to turn on. So the switch has power all the time right here, but it is wait, and, the comp and notice that it's always, it's a normally closed switch. The brake is waiting for that to change states, or the computer, I should say, is waiting for that to change states. So let's look at what's happening on the inside of here again. If it has power all the time, then we know that this has to be ground internally. Now, that can't just be a ground wire by itself, or that's a straight short circuit. And I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between on and off because if I was sensing inside the computer, it would just always read ground. So we know, again, there is a resistor, a fixed resistor. It's hard to see through the writing there, but there's a fixed resistor in there. And there is a sensor wire that's coming off and measuring right there. So when this switch is closed, that sensor, since it's before the load that's internal, will read 12 volts. So we're saying that 12 volts on this circuit equals that you're not pushing the brake. And that means we're not going to command this. When you push on the brake pedal and we go open circuit right here, this signal wire will have access to just ground so that it'll read zero volts. And when zero volts means you're pushing on it, and that is going to then uh, command the shift solenoid. Okay, so since we're controlling on the ground side, or we're sensing off of the ground side, this is a pull down circuit. So when we go open circuit on this wire, or if we unplug this switch, we would default to zero volts. That's what makes it a pull down circuit. Okay, now over here on the output, this one's interesting because you can see like the PCM is the one getting the input, but it's not even directly controlling the output at all. What it's actually doing is sending data over this class two serial bus, and then the BCM is the one that sees the data and then commands the driver. So all the more important to understand that inputs don't directly control outputs. Instead, inputs talk to processors, and then processors use that information and then control the output. So over here on the low side driver, we know that internally in here, it's going to ground, but what's between there is a transistor that we'll draw, and then what's controlling the base of that transistor is the processor. The processor will command that base and then close the circuit so ground can get to the solenoid. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand the difference between low and high side drivers, pull up versus pull down circuits, and then kind of what's going on in the computer that they don't show us. I realized it was hard to see what I was drawing inside of here since I was drawing on top of writing. So I just redrew those for you so you can see a little bit better what I was doing. If you have any questions on this, shoot me some comments.
but that's it.